Hi guys! So, that is so embarrassing. Nah, I need a better intro, but that'll do for now. So, I decided to start a YouTube channel because all of my friends on my private Snapchat story were literally like, you need to do one. Like, because I basically just talk the most amount of rubbish on my private story. It's embarrassing. Like, it's just, it's not good. Like, there's like a constant flow of videos that go up and it's just me talking rubbish and I just talk for ages. But you know what? Now I'm doing this. So... Fine. Maybe there'll be less of that on my private story on Snapchat. For those of you that don't know, my name's Tommy. I am 22 years old. I'm a Taurus, if anyone's interested. And I'm single. <laughs> that is embarrassing. I am going to get absolutely ripped for that. But you know what? It's all about personality, in it. Um. So yeah, I'm doing a Sarah Shotter for my first video because I was like, normally everyone does like that, like, get to know me thing. And that's just not me. I'm very much all about getting drunk, having a great time, and yeah. And also, you kind of get to know me in this as well, because there's just questions in here that I'm going to answer that are actually quite, like, get to know me-ish. So, yeah, let's just get straight into it. Oh, wait, and what I'm going to be shotting is, don't judge me, because I cannot shot tequila or vodka, because the last time I shot a tequila sober, I spewed it in my hand. So... Anyone that did the contract in Blackpool with me, you'll know about that story. But anyway, so I'm shotting sewers, apple sewers, hashtag ad. No, I'm joking. Am I going to get done for that? Can I put that in? It's not an ad. I bought it myself. Um, anyway. <laughs> and I'm shotting out of an egg cup because I can't find a shot glass. But it is quite a deep one. Like, that's quite big. That's a big shot. Right. So... Let's move straight on to the questions. Okay, so the first one is, what is your happiest memory? And I can't really think of one. I feel like my happiest memory would probably have to be something to do with the dance, like a show or something. Oh, do you know what? Happiest memory, definitely. Pr would it be? Would it be? Probably one of the shows we did in third year at college. Um, Probably... Probably triple bill, because that was when, like, just, like, everyone was just, like, so, like, up in their spirits. Because I feel like at 21, everyone was ready to leave. By the way, 21 was our final show, just for perspective, for people that don't know what MG is and where I went to college. Oh, I should have mentioned I'm a dancer. I'm so crap at this, because I don't, like, I don't know who's going to be watching this. It's just my friends that are going to be watching this. It's people that I don't know. Like, for people that don't know, I'm a dancer. I graduated in June, and I'm looking for work now. So if you're a casting director... Can you please hire me? But yeah, probably Triple Bill because that was like when we were all just like so buzzing and it was just, it was an experience because we had Christy Lee Manning and James Harris came and choreographed um, two of our pieces for us and it was incredible. Um, and yeah, it was just a fab time. So that's probably my happiest memory. So I don't have to shot that one. Next one is most embarrassing moment. And I'm trying to think of one that isn't related to the bedroom because I don't really want to announce that on my YouTube channel or on the internet to anyone, to be honest. But all I can think of ones are from the bedroom. So I'm not going to lie, I'm going to have to shot that one because I don't want my dad finding out stuff about this or anyone in my family, to be honest. So I guess bottoms up. Right. Cheers. Oh. Ooh. So the next one is also related to the bedroom and it is worst and I quote rumpy pumpy experience. You know exactly who you are <laughs> if you put that one. So questionable wording for there, for that, for there. I didn't do well in English, that's why I became a dancer. Anyway, um, so I'm not going to answer that one either, because also my most, to be honest, them two go hand in hand. Worst experience in bed and also in most embarrassing moment was the same thing. So we are actually just going to shot that one. Cheers. Next one. So next one is worst experience on a date. <laughs> And I'm not going to lie, I've only ever been on, actually no, I've been on two dates in my entire life. One of them was with a boy from college. 
Um, and it was actually quite a nice day. We went to a comedy club. It was really quite embarrassing because then they started picking on us. And um, they actually said who was the better dancer. And um, he actually said it was me. But um, we'll move on because it's probably still better that you had to say that. Um, <laughs> and then the other one was probably the... It was the most awkward thing ever. We literally we went to Rev and we had food and we had and like we were both just on our phones, like wasn't really paying attention to each other. Like it was just really not okay. So yeah, I'm sorry about that. If you're out there, like that was the worst date I've ever experienced in my life. And it was my first date, so kind of set the standard, didn't it? I'm not gonna lie, that's kind of a shit one, so I'll do a half shot for that one because that was a really boring one. Ugh. I keep making that face after I've done it because I'm just like, ugh. Ah! Next one! Body count! I don't want to say this. Yeah, I'm sorry. I'm not saying that. I'm not saying... Because I'm like, see if this was my private story Snapchat, I would happily say it because I don't care. But like, like, you know, like, what if I was like... Right, I'm thinking of the... I'm thinking of the future here. What if, like, I turn out to have, like, so many followers and, like, what if I get famous? And then they're like, oh... <laughs> This boy, actually, you know what I mean? I d no, that's not happening. So, here we go. <gasps> okay, next one. So, the next one is celebrity crush. And I'm not going to lie, I don't really have a male celebrity crush because if anyone that knows me knows that I just fancy anything with a pulse. So, I only really have, like, female celebrity crushes, which are, obviously, Ariana... Everyone slates me for the way I say this, but grande or grande or however you want to say her name. Ariana, you know. Um, and then, like, Molly Mae and Jess Hunt. So, yeah, I don't have to shot that because I answered it. I'm howling. I could never do that in college, and I still can't do it to this day. I just, is it called a Millie Rock? Yeah, I think so, and it's like... <laughs> I just like stupid doing it. Anyway, I'm not even joking. All of these questions are related to... The bedroom area because all of my friends are twats and they just want to out me but it's not gonna happen the next one is give or receive and i'm gonna let you make your assumptions about that one um so you can make your assumption while i take a shot next one where do you see yourself in 10 years so in 10 years i will actually be 32 years old and by the age of 32 i'm hoping that i've like I'm either working or have worked in Paris, in the Moulin Rouge or Lido or Nouvelle Eve or Paradise Latin, whichever one wants to take me. And yeah, hopefully I'll have worked there or I'm working there with a beautiful boyfriend or husband or... Oh my God, that's disgusting. I don't want to have kids at that age though. I feel like I want to wait a little bit, maybe like 35, like maybe like late 30s, like that's when I want to have kids. Obviously not have them, but, like, adopt or surrogacy or whatever. Um, so, yeah. Just be, like, like thinking about settling down. Still working in dance, but, like, thinking about settling down. So, yeah. That's where I see myself in 10 years. Right. The next one. Favourite memory, new look. Um, so, I, I've i worked in a couple of new looks. More so the Union Square one and the, the Guile Centre in Edinburgh. And, honestly, guys, I'm not going to lie. I... As much as I used to complain and stuff, I loved working at you, Luke. It was just, like, it was banter. Like, I made a lot of friends there. Like, a lot of friends that I'll probably have, like, for for life. Yeah, I would say that. Friends that I'd have for life. Um, So, my favourite memory... I'll, I'll do one from each. I'll do one from each. My favourite memory from the Union Square store was... <laughs> it's so embarrassing. So, basically, I was on my lunch break. And I was in the staff room. And I was having... Was I having a curry? Yeah, I was having a curry because, you know, like the ready meal ones. I just put it in the microwave because I had like an hour for my lunch and I was like, you know what, I'll cheat myself, I'll get a curry. So I got a curry, put it in the microwave and um, I took out poppadoms and I was like, oh, they're really soggy. So I thought, yeah, put them in the microwave and it'll be fine. So I put them in the microwave for a minute, not thinking anything of it, I went to the toilet and the fire alarm started going off and I was like, what is that? I ran, I went through and the whole staff room was just covered in smoke. <gasps> and I'm not even joking. Literally, um the uh, deputy head and deputy head, um the deputy manager, Heather, ran out in like <laughs> like a fl fluorescent what's it called? Like a like a tabard. Tabard, you know the vests that they wear. 
and she's like getting the fire alarm like thing all going and i was like i can't can i swear on this it's my channel fuck i was like fuck i was like, oh my god i'm absolutely nah i was done i was so i was so worried because i was like oh my god like am i gonna get in trouble for this and like every customer in the changing room had to go outside in the clothes that they were tying on or like half their clothes it was so funny <laughs> And she was like, when I don't know what it is, I don't know what it is. And I was like, Heather, it was me. <laughs> I actually got told not that long ago that they still talk about it to this day. So, because I've not worked in the Union Square one since like 2019, I want to say. Yeah, I've not worked in the Union Square one since 2019. So, so you know, I've got, I've made a lasting impression in that store. For the Edinburgh Guile store, um, I don't actually know what my favourite memory is. I actually got promoted to supervisor in that store. Look at me being all managerial and stuff. And literally, by the way, I was, I think I was 20. Yeah, I was 20 years old and I was in charge of a shop. Like, who put me in charge of a shop? <laughs> I can hardly count to 10 without struggling. So yeah, very grateful for that. But my favourite memory was probably just Sundays in general. Sundays were a great day. We always had so much fun. Um, and it was just like, I got to see my friends every day, uh, every weekend, sorry. Like... Yeah, every Sunday probably. So yeah, I don't have to stop for that one. Next question is guilty pleasure. And this is slightly embarrassing because, I mean, it's not because everyone does it, but my guilty pleasure at the moment is disposable vapes. It is so embarrassing. But you know what? Disposable vapes are fucking great. And I'm embarrassed to say so, but they are. You know what? I'll, I'll take a shot just for just for the embarrassment of having a disposable vape to hand as well. So the next question, it's a bit of a touchy one, but I'm going to read it anyway. So this person said, did it hurt when you fell from heaven? It did not because I rose from hell. So I'm going to take a shot just for that one alone. I'm like gripping on the table. I'm like, ugh. So <laughs> I actually don't even want to say this one, but you know what? We're going to say it anyway. So, the next one is worst present you've gotten from a boy. No. <laughs> I don't know that. Can I, like, insert a picture of it there? If I was able to insert the picture there, you'll have seen that it was, it's, it's a bit of a weird photo. But basically, I'll, go, I'll say this one quickly because I know that I talk so much crap. But basically, um, I was on Grindr... After a night out, and I was in the hotel room with Maggie, and this guy was messaging me, like, oh, do you want to come meet me? And I was like, yeah, okay, then. So, scooted my way on out of the hotel, was like, Maggie, I'm going by. Met this boy outside, and walked back to his. And, like, I walked into his flat, and there was no furniture, and I was like... And it turns out that he just moved into that flat because his ex-flatmate tried to kill him or something, and I was like, right, red flags, red flags. So I just was just living my best life, like, yeah, this is this is a bit awkward, but you know what? He seems nice. And like, you know, like things start to happen. And then I just started to get really weirded out. And I was like, nah, I can't be here anymore. Cause like it was literally on his living room floor. I was like, no, thank you. So got up and I was like, like, I'm really sorry, but I'm gonna have to leave now. And he was like, wait, I need to give you a present. And I was like, whoa, I was like, nah, he's a way to stab me. So I was literally sat there like looking at things that I could like throw at him. Like, could I grab that plate? Could I like, cause I was like, he's got no furniture. So it can't, not like I can throw a couch at him. Me acting as if I can lift up a couch. Um, But yeah, and then he comes through with like a book and I'm like, oh, okay then a book. And then he opens the book and it's like all these drawings. And I'm like, oh, like you're really good at art. And then he was like, yeah, you can have one. I was like, oh, I don't want, I don't want one. I was like, I'm sorry, but I need to go home now. He picks up the framed one that's on his mantelpiece and he's like, this is yours. And I was like, oh. I was like, no, it's not. <laughs> it's not mine. And he literally wouldn't let me leave unless I took it. Forced it into my hands and I walked out the door. I'm walking down the street with this photo of someone literally looking like they're having an orgasm. And I was like, I can't deal with this. Like, why have I been given this? So I'll go back into the hotel and I just leave it there. I don't even take it home with me. I just leave it for the people in the travel lodge to sort and sort out and find themselves. Because I'm sorry, but that was not coming home with me. So yeah. That's the worst present I've had from a boy. One up that, please. Most embarrassing thing you've done to get a boy's attention. I'm trying to think about what this actually is because 
to be honest, probably everything I do is quite embarrassing. So basically, in Dece <laughs> in December, I was on a show and um, there was a number called Heartland and what we wore for it were these like high neck, like black long sleeved, like bodysuit things with like a belt and these hot pants. And a certain person would come and watch this show. And <laughs> I'm actually embarrassed to say this, but I would pull my shorts up so that my arse cheeks would hang out. <laughs> so yeah, the worst, the worst thing, the most, it's the worst thing? What's it? The most embarrassing thing I've done to get a boy's attention is to pull my shorts up so that they would comment on my arse. Did it work? Yes, it did. It did work, actually. But we won't dwell on that for too long. <laughs> Touchy subject. Anyway, strangest place I've woke up in. So, I don't really wake up in many strange places. Um, I'm going to have to drink for this one because I actually can't think of anywhere that I've woken up. It's a bit... Yeah, no, I'm going to have to drink for this one. There's strange places I've gone to, but like none that I've woken up in. Yeah, no. No. Sorry, guys. So, next question is first male crush. And I'm sorry, but I am not answering this question. Mainly because, like, when I was younger, I, when I, like, I came out when I was in second year of academy, which, to everyone that's watching this from England or anywhere else, I was 12 years old when I came out. So that's quite young. But I'm not even joking when I say every single week it I changed who I fancied. Like, I'm like, oh my god, I really like this person. And then a week later, I'm like, over them. Fancy them now. Like, literally, the only criteria I had to fancy someone when I was 12 years old was a pulse and a penis. That was literally all I needed. The two Ps. A pulse and a penis. I'm going to shot it, though. I mean, I have to shot it. Um, because, yeah, that's not getting told. Some people do know who it is, and I mean, if you're my friend and you want to know, you can probably just ask me and I'll tell you, but I'm not putting it out there for the internet to all know about, because that's just a beamer. Next question is, the age of the oldest person you've slept with. <sighs> Moving on. My next question is, what made you want to start dancing? So, like I said before, I'm a dancer. I started cheerleading before I started dancing. Um, and then a couple of my friends, um, from my dance school, uh, said, oh my god, well, from the dance school they were at, they were like, oh my gosh, like, you should come to our jazz class, and I was like, oh my god, okay then, I'll come to your jazz class. So, I went to their jazz classes, uh, it was just once a week, and then I was like, oh, I actually really like this, so then I asked them if I could go to, like, Tap and Modern, and I went to Tap and Modern on a Saturday, and then... Uh, I really liked that, and we did a we did a dance show in two thousand and fifteen, and I feel like that dance show was like what made me realize I wanted to dance a career because we did the show and the finale was the can can and the can can literally was honestly my favorite dance I have ever done. Like I loved it. Like it was all legs, tricks, like just everything that. I am as a dancer, basically, because I have no anything else. I'm just, I'm all legs and all tricks. Ask me to do anything else and you're screwed because you're not seeing anything else. Being on stage and doing the can-can and, like, the audience and just, like, just the presence of being on a show and everything, like, that just really, like, made me want to be a dancer. And that's when I started taking it more seriously because then after that summer, I started ballet. And then I got asked to go to, like, all the, like, like the senior classes, like all the extra classes. And then from there, I was just like, this is what I want to do with my life. Got a bit deep there, but that's what happened. And from there, I got into MGA, which is in Edinburgh, and studied there for three years. And I came out with a first class honours. I know, I know, who would have thought it? Tommy Smith with a first. No one at school thought it because I was a dumb... So the next question is something that changed your life. And I'm not going to lie, the only thing I can really think of is my mum. But yeah, so when I was nine years old, no, I wasn't nine years old. I was 11. No, I wasn't. I was 10. When I was 10, I lost my mum in a bike accident. 
Um, and I feel like that changed my life because, like, especially when I got into, like, well, some people call it academy, but some people call it high school. We'll call it high school just for, yeah. So when I got into high school, like, I was very much, like, I want to do something to make my mom proud. And it was just, like, I don't know. I feel like, because when I was, like, when I was in primary school and stuff like that, like, I didn't do clubs. I didn't do anything like that. Like, I did swim in, like, once a week. Um, but, like, it wasn't very exciting. Like, I just didn't really do much. And then when I got into high school, like, I just, I went and did cheerleading. Like, I went and did dancing and like I don't know I feel like everything I do now I do it like with her in the back of my head like without sounding really like oh but like yeah like I just do everything for her basically so yeah I'm gonna take a shot actually just just for you Michelle I'm taking a shot she'd actually be watching me do this video like you are a gimp like you need a life and <laughs> I'd honestly like I know I actually know but yeah this one's for you Michelle so yeah guys that is my first YouTube video. I can't believe I'm actually doing this, but hey -o. Um, If you, oh, is it is it cringy to say that? If you like this video, like it, comment on it, subscribe to my channel, tell your friends, tell your moms, tell your dads, especially tell your dads. No, I'm joking. Ah! I'm not gonna lie, I'm a wee bit tipsy because um, I am a lightweight. But yeah, so thanks guys. If you stayed through the whole video, you're just great. Love you so much. Big love. Um, if you didn't, then you missed out because, I mean, you probably didn't, but hey-ho. Um, but yeah, thanks guys. See you later.